Hi, and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to revisit this mill bracket part. Uh, we recently programmed this part from scratch. Um, if you didn't watch the previous video, we really took a deep dive into this part where we talked about importing the model, orienting, aligning, creating tools, creating processes, and from there creating operations. We gave tips and tricks and hopefully we tried to show you the how and not just the why. Now having said that, once you program a part, you do not have to again start from scratch to program a similar part. So this is really relevant if you're doing families of parts or like parts or similar parts. So once you've gone through all the effort to create a program and create processes for a part, you can then save those processes and reload them when you have a new part. So when you save a process, it saves your tool definition, it saves your feeds and speeds, rough stock, depths of cut, it saves your lead in and lead out, it saves everything you need for that process. And then when you have a new part in the software, you just have to apply that process to the new features. And there you have Toolpath. So it really does make you more efficient when you're programming like or similar parts. So I'm going to essentially start this part again from scratch, utilizing the processes that I saved from the first time around to show you how efficiently and rapidly that you can process this part. So again, the part has been imported and it's skewed and uh, yeah, let's proceed to, to program this part. So the first thing I'll need to do is orient. So I'm going to create my alternate coordinate systems. Um, this will help me align the parts. So I'm going to create YZ and XZ, XZ and YZ. And I'm going to use face selection to select the top of my model. Right click, align that face to that coordinate system. And I'm going to align this face to this coordinate system. Go back to my XY plane, shrink wrap. And now I need to move my part origin to this upper corner. So I'm going to move it in X that amount, and Y that amount, and in Z to the top of the part. Do it. Now my X, Y, zero is in the upper left corner of my finished part. Once that's accomplished, I'll go into my stock, and I will add an eighth inch of stock all the way around. I need to add stock there, negative 0.125. And you see my stock does change uh, live as I'm increasing my stock size. I'm going to put 50 thousandths on the top face. And if this is uh, inch and three quarter, the bottom of my stock will now be uh, negative 1.7. So you can see I have a nice bit of material all the way around that I can start machining. So I'm going to load my processes. Uh, this will be the face and outer profile. And I'm actually just going to use my profiler instead of extracting geometry. So I can put this at that height. I'll select it here and uh, do it. And there's my face pass, my profile rough, and my profile finish. I'm going to hit clear there. And then let's see, what's the next process? My top step. On this one, I'm actually going to extract geometry. So I'll turn on geometry extract, uh, edge selection and extract that edge. I only need one piece of geometry to machine this top step. I'll go in and load that process and apply the markers to that piece of geometry. And that's done. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, pocket with island. I'm actually going to use face selection and select the bottom of those pockets. Whoops. And um, extract the edges of those. Now because this top one is an open pocket, I'm going to turn that wall into air and I'll do the pocket with the island first. I need the outer geometry, inner geometry. Do it, that's done. Clear, load the next process. The open pocket there, I'll select that. Do it, that's done. I like to put empty spaces in between my operations to help me visually delineate them. Okay, top slot and holes. I am gonna use profiler on these features. So I'm going to load this process uh, top slot, and I'll apply my markers uh, to the center of one of the ends. Do it, and then I'll 
clear that first. And then I'm going to drill the 551 holes. So I select that, that, that holes. The tool determines the hole size, so you can drill a point or any circle, even if the circle doesn't match the drill size. So that's not an issue there. And now I'm going to drill the smaller holes, which are here and here. These are 5 16 diameter. Those are done. And then I need to interpolate this counter bore. So I'm going to set my markers there. A little bit oversized, and so you can see my helical interpolation toolpath there. And then what's next? Uh, surfacing. So for this one, I did create a piece of construction geometry to surface this face here. So I want to get rid of those slots. So I'm going to put the part in the body bag, hit Control-D to create a new model, put on face selection, select all the features of this pocket which interfere with this chamfer. I'm going to pull up my solid modeling tool and go to unstitch here. I do not need to create a plug. And they're gone. So once that's done, I can load my process, which is uh, surfacing. 3x is surfacing and face selection is on and click do it. So that is the last part of op 1. So if I run my op sim, I can see my part uh, machine fully for op 1. So I'm going to utilize this rendering for my second op. So I'm going to right click up here and I'm going to create a facet body. And what that essentially does is it creates a translucent model of the cut stock. So I'm going to use that for my second op. So I'm going to file save. I've saved my op 1. And I'm going to save as. This is going to be op 2. Yep. And then I'm going to put that in the body bag, my stock. I don't need this construction model any longer. I do not need this 2D geometry and all of my operations I'm going to delete. I no longer need these uh, second and third work groups. So what I need to do is reorient my model so I can machine it in my second operation. So I'm going to recreate a YZ coordinate system. Take my model, face selection is on, I'll turn that off. And I'll go modify 2D rotate. Let's do 180 degrees. Then I'll take my facet body, move that 180 degrees put that in my body bag, go back to my XY plane, and now I need to move my part origin again because I do want it on this face, on this face, and on the top of my finished face. So there's my origin there. I will do another shrink wrap. And then my stock body, I'm going to right click on that and tell the software that it is stock. It'll turn it blue. So that's what's going to appear when I do my toolpath rendering. Now, um, let's start loading the processes for my face pass on op2. I can simply do that. It recognizes where the stock is and there's the machining off the top of that material. Now for these next two, I need to machine these two steps. So I'm going to turn on edge selection, select that edge, that edge, right click and extract those. I have 2D geometry for that. I'm going to load my process list for step one, apply my markers there, put it on the correct side and that's done. And then clear, I'm going to load my process for my step two. Select that geometry, left side climb milling and there we go. So if I run my op sim now, there is my cut for my second op. This step is yellow because I have it highlighted in yellow there. I can rewind. And there's my complete part, um, op 1 and op 2, utilizing saved processes from a previous program. So I know I went through that really quickly. If you want a deeper dive into how I created this, please reference the first video for the mill bracket. Um, the model will be downloadable. And I hope this kind of just gives you a quick indication of how to you how efficient you can be if you utilize saved processes uh, within Gibbs Camp. Thank you very much for watching.